Hello friends, welcome to our channel Milan Neuron which means watch and learn. So we have covered two parts so far and today we are going to look into the final and the third part of this project which is uh, predicting customer churn in the telecom industry. Okay, so in our previous video we have seen that we have we were able to implement many different types of classifiers and we also checked their accuracy as well. But strangely, they are only slightly better than my random guessing. That also we have seen, right? So we cannot look into just the accuracy, but we also have to explore different other metrics, also known as performance metrics. And we are going to look into the precision recall or the ROC curve as well. So what we are going to do, first of all, is uh, based on the cross bell predict module in our SQL Learn library, uh, we are going to first create a confusion matrix. So I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the confusion matrix, but then we are going to throw some lights uh, in explaining what a confusion matrix can tell us. So first of all, in this case, we have a binary classifier. So we have a two by two uh, confusion matrix. The rows represents the actual class, which is no NES, or in numbers, it will be zero and one and the columns represents the predicted class that we have made so which is again zero and one but then those are our predictions okay so we are comparing the actuals versus the predicted so as you can see here we are using the classifier gradient boost which we found to be the best classifier so far which be based on the accuracy right so that gives us a some uh, you know starting point that you know we should start with the gradient boost because it has the highest accuracy so we are going to calculate the confusion matrix for that particular classifier so we can see that in the first row of the confusion matrix 2792 values or records are not churned and my code was correctly able to predict no churn so it also known as true negatives because we are predicting the normal class 58 were wrongly classified as no churn, okay, also known as false positives. Now in the second row of the confusion matrix, we see that 356 were churn and my code was actually correctly able to classify them as churn. So that is called as true positives. But I see that 127 were not churn but was classified as churn, also known as false negatives. Now, this confusion matrix gives us a lot of information about my classifier. So now we are interested in knowing two terms. One is called precision, which is the true positive over, over the true positive plus false positive. And the recall is the ratio of true positive over the sum total of true positive and false negative. But what does that mean in the real world? So in this particular problem, it is okay to predict that a person is going to churn even if in reality he or she is not going to churn, which is totally fine. You know, we, we might made a, make a mistake that that person is going to churn, but it's still not a bad thing for the business because that person is actually staying and continuing as a customer, right? This situation is okay. However, if we predict a person is not going to churn, but in fact that person is actually planning to churn in real world, then it could mean loss of business, right? Because that customer is going away. So this is used to call uh, and this is also used to calculate what is called as a recall. So the first one is for precision and this is for recall. So what you can understand from precision and recall is in this particular project, in this particular context, recall efficiency should be higher because that is what we have to find that the classifier should be have a, have a high recall. So how do we calculate this precision and recall for this uh, gradient bush classifier? So it is also available in the sklearn.matrix library and we can import the precision score and the recall score and that is nothing but that ratio that we have just now discussed so we calculate that the precision is around 86 percent but the recall if you see now is about 74 percent which is a not a good number right so earlier we had a 96 percent accuracy in the classifier but then when we are very specific about the recall we see that it's only doing 74 percent so what do we do next so it could happen that the threshold that this classifier is using is not properly set right so a simple thing is to move the threshold up or down that means basically whenever you want to identify the you know decision boundary 
for the yes and no we want to make sure that our threshold are changed and we can see where exactly it gives us a, a good recall and precision okay but uh, the scikit learn library does not let us change that threshold directly so there is an alternate way is through the cross val predict again and there we can pass a method called decision function and that will tell us what are the current thresholds that are being used and based on that we can calculate our thresholds and we can plot it against our precision and recall so if you see now i can write a very simple uh, function to plot this precision and recall uh, in the y axis and the in the x axis we can put the threshold so you can see our point of interest is the portion where the precision and recall you know intersect each other which is roughly around 80% of the green line which is a point 8 i can also plot uh, this precision against recall so instead of the threshold so i can see that roughly around point 8 after point 8 the recall you know uh, goes definitely goes high but the precision also will fall but we have to keep in mind that we have to trade off between precision and recall we definitely need a high recall but then that will also impact my precision so we have to be very particular about choosing these thresholds but for the time being i am okay to go with 80% recall now this is where the business people will tell you the number right they will tell you what percentage of recall is are they okay with okay so now that we have calculated the thresholds I am changing my threshold to minus 0.5 because that is what I got from the first graph here. If you see, if you see here, yeah, this one. So if you see here, if I zoom in, you can see roughly around at minus 0.5, I got around 80% of recall. Okay, and so based on that, I can update my scores. and calculate my new precision and recall now if you see here my new recall has improved by around 5 or 4 or 5% now i can keep changing this threshold and keep getting a different precision and recall now it will be a good idea if i can plot this okay and see it for different classifiers so by changing the classifiers threshold we can definitely change the precision and recall we also would like to try this for different classifiers right now all these calculations are for gradient boosting classifier because that had the highest accuracy but it doesn't mean that the other classifier will not have a better precision or recall right so what will be our next task is to also give a try to all other classifiers to calculate the precision and recall now one last thing that we will check is the roc curve so it also known as the receiver operating characteristic curve is just an another tool typically used for binary classifiers so it is a very similar to the precision and recall curve but instead of plotting the precision versus recall it is going to plot the true positive rate also known as recall against the false positive rate so it is not going to be just precision and recall but it will be recall versus the false positive rate we can similarly plot this and escalon dot matrix gives us that calculation as well and we can see that the roc curve also looks quite similar to our precision curve that means we can have a you know recall about 0.8 because after that it keeps going up but your other things might get impacted so both this parametrics uh, or this matrix performance matrix tells us that we can try to achieve an 80% you know recall uh, by changing those threshold values okay now in the real world this is how we decide which classifier should we use what threshold should we use and depending on the data set and depending on the project we go either with precision or with recall or probably with accuracy as well but it all depends on the context and so in the medical industry you might even want a more better recall strategy because it's okay at times to identify somebody having a disease and giving a treatment and not okay if a person has the disease and we are not giving that person any treatment right so those situations comes and that is tackled using precision and recall so depending on the context you have to decide what you are going to use right 
all right so now that you know how to select the best model and the parameters so why don't you try to calculate the different precision and recall and the ROC curve for the different classifiers that we have already created uh, the for the random forest for the decision tree logistic regression SVM and the KNNs and to select the best classifier uh, which provides you with the best you know PR curve all right so hopefully now you know how to train a binary classifier choose the metric for your tasks and also evaluate using the cross validation that we just now have shown you select the trade of numbers that fits your purpose and compare different models using ROC curve so it's not just one of in particular project if gradient boosting has done better doesn't mean that random forest will not do better in another project so this is how we typically decide to use you know different models and you know using the confusion matrix we come up with different strategies and at times we might also go back and change our processing of the data as well we might you know do uh, under sampling or over sampling or smote in order to even further massage the data and square you know squeeze our data to come to and arrive to a point which suits our purpose so let's uh, you know practice this and please share your comment that how did you find the project idea and the solution and we hope to bring you another project very soon along with the codes and all these interesting ideas thanks for watching 